Sorry about that, guys. My cat, when I moved her, hit the end button on my recording. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, not a lot of jazz pieces survived because they weren't really written down. They were just kind of played. Um, and it wasn't really until the 1920s that we got to writing it down. Um, they they did a lot of improvised instruments. Uh, one of the things that made America different than other countries that were involved in the slave trade, specifically Cuba and Haiti, um, is American plantation owners didn't allow drumming um, and the use of drums, which was a big thing traditionally in Africa. And so they improvised their instruments. Um, if you've ever seen one of the photos where they're like strumming on the metal washboard or blowing into the big jugs, that's kind of where that, that came from. And it's all the birth of jazz. Um, they also used body percussion. So stomps and pats and claps and stuff. Um, some of the famous artists of the 1800s include Louis Moreau Gottschalk, Buddy Bolden, and King Oliver. Um, King Oliver is actually... Uh, believed to be the person who taught Louis Armstrong, who is one of the most famous jazz musicians of all time. So I thought he was kind of cool. So how did marches shape music in America? Um, marches weren't popular until the Civil War. Um, you didn't really see marches outside of the battlefield up until the Civil War happened. Um, and then military bands, once they the war was over and they went home, they took their music home and they took their love of music home and they made little bands and communities. And so the band scene grew across America. Um, this led to music and instruments having to be manufactured in the United States because there was suddenly a demand for it. Um, we didn't really need instruments that much until, we got to this point in history. Um, some famous composers of March music in the late 1800s include John Philip Sousa, who is probably one of the most famous names in composition of American history. Um, Henry Fillmore and Carl King, as well as Patrick Sarfield Gilmore, who was also considered one of the best of the best um, up on, por on par with Sousa. Um, there's another link to a video here. It's called Stars and Stripes Forever, um, written by John Philip Sousa. Um, brilliant song, very, very um, American. So one of the other things that was happening at this time in history, um, this is not just in America, this is in the entire world, was the Industrial Revolution, um, which was the growth of factories and um, like manufacturing. And we were starting to mass produce things and we were seeing a lot more buildings and more cars and big technological advances. Music responded to this by creating romanticism, which is kind of a bring back to nature and the things that really made um, the world beautiful. Um, a lot of classical composers, people that we assume are classical, are actually in the Romantic era. Um, Ludwig von Beethoven is one of those. He is um, actually considered a romantic composer, but um, he's early romanticism, which is why he's usually um, tied in with classical music. Uh, something I found really interesting about this is that this really had an influx of female and African-American composers. It's one of the first times and only times in history that we really saw um, women and African-Americans towing the line with um, white male composers. Uh, however, a lot of those were lost to history. Um, we don't know what happened to their music. It just didn't survive. Uh, some famous romantic composers include Richard Wagner, Edward Grieg, um, Tchaikovsky, who um, wrote The Nutcracker and Swan Lake, and also The uh, Waltz of the Flowers, which is the uh, video down here for you to listen to. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, Amy Beach and Alma Mailer were some female composers, and Henry Lawrence Freeman was an African-American composer. Um, so definitely check them out. Another big thing that changed the way America viewed music was the boom in immigration. 
after the Civil War, a lot of people came to the United States. Um, I say that this kind of added spice to the melting pot of American music. Um, it really added diversity and variety and changed the way that American music worked. Um, one of the big groups that was moving over in the late 1800s were Eastern European Jews. Um, and they brought klezmer music, which is kind of, uh, it's a Hebrew music that involves a lot of um, vocalization, a lot of syncopation. Um, and it really influenced jazz music. Another thing that Eastern Europeans brought with them was the popularity of the clarinet. Um, little tidbit, uh, up until right, you know, up until the late 1800s, um, the, this country wasn't s supposed to have loud music. So they used a lot of violin and a lot of really soft sounds. Um, and at the end of the century, they kind of got rid of that um, ban and the clarinet replaced the violin in um, popularity. They also brought the polka and the fiddle, as well as a lot of traditional instruments from other countries. And all of that changed the way that the music industry worked. Um, something I did not include when we are getting into... Um, ragtime. Um, ragtime, the big thing with ragtime was piano. And so in this era, um, it was kind of viewed as your status symbol was if you had a piano in your house. Um, so if you were middle class or higher and you didn't have a piano in that, your house, you didn't really count. Um, so it was a very much a status symbol at that time. So piano grew in popularity as well. Um, so, yes, um, with this, I mentioned a lot of names of famous composers um, and artists. I do want you to pick one and create a short little um, presentation like this um, on Google Slides that's just telling me a little bit about them. Uh, where were they born? When were they born? What were they famous for? What style of music did they do? Um, show me a couple of their songs that you really, really liked. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was a lot of information for you. Sorry it is in two parts. Cats. Um, and I will talk to all of you later. Stay well.